Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about smart cameras. Hot on the heels of my video where I gave you guys a buyer's guide about the right IP cameras, a lot of you wanted to know about the difference between smart cameras and ordinary cameras because smart is a word that gets thrown around a lot in terms of marketing jargon and or and so, you know a lot of the time it just isn't true and smart is one of those words that could mean anything really. Um, so today we want to talk about five key things. We're going to talk about one, what is a smart camera? What makes it different to another one? Two, why would you use a smart camera? What can they do that normal cameras can't do? Three, where are most cameras, smart cameras found? What devices are they in? What are the most common types? And four, what are the negatives of a smart camera? What are the things that it kind of opens you to? What are the things that they don't really tell you about smart cameras when you get one in your home office environment? Also, finally, what are the alternatives to smart cameras we'll attack on there at the end? But let's go for that first one straight away. What is a smart camera? A smart camera in modern parlance is a camera that has embedded AI support. Traditional cameras that we've utilized in the past, that I'll go through in a little bit more detail later, have cameras and lenses, and they have cameras on them for recording your face or recording your friends or taking pictures and stuff when you're on holiday. But any kind of analysis that happens to that footage, be it for detection, for evidence, or to be utilized for browsing and finding stuff that you want to see, like your holidays when you're abroad, or photos of your friends and family or work colleagues, that is done afterwards you have the footage you have albums you have recorded videos you have piles and days and weeks and months of recorded archive data which you then use third-party software to analyze or you analyze yourself over time smart cameras are very very different they factor an extra layer of perception into them You've still got the lens, and the lenses on smart cameras are generally a much higher quality because they have to be, because inside they generally have CPUs or SOC software on chip or um, basically processors inside, uh, inside and a little bit of flash memory that acts just like a PC, but it is looking at every single frame of recording. And what it's doing is using preset parameters and an AI engine to identify things, uh, identify events, and much more than simple movement. The majority of basic cameras um, that aren't smart will say they've got motion detection, okay? And motion detection and night vision. These are the two words that have flown around for a long time in cameras. And what that means is, in terms of motion, they are detecting pixel uh, depth changes um, on the screen, what they're seeing. And when large pixel groups are moved together based on sensitivity levels that you set in advance, that is how it identifies movement. And it's why a lot of non-smart cameras these days are terrible for outside of the home. Because if a tree moves slightly in the wind, that will trigger a movement alert, which isn't useful. You, what you want to know about is someone's breaking in, stealing your telly. What you don't want to hear about is a tree outside at a bit of a wobble. So that's why traditional non-smart cameras are really falling out of favor and why they're so affordable these days. Because smart cameras can identify so much more than that. The tree can wave around all it wants because the smart camera won't care. What it's looking for are things. It identifies cars, people, objects, pets, animals. It identifies things because the AI algorithm has a general understanding of what things are. The features and functionality of a smart camera are way more than that, and we'll touch on that in part two. But in this, the smart camera with its extra layer of AI uh, embedded uh, support inside means that you at the next level, looking and archiving and researching the footage for one reason or another for home or personal use, will not have to go through days, weeks, months, or even years of recordings. You can either be alerted to certain instances, such as a person coming into field or a human entering an area of, uh, of, of, of motion, but not a car or a thing or a dog or anything like that, and you can only receive the alerts so you don't have to watch hours and days of recordings, or you can use the AI algorithm to only record certain areas of the screen that have certain things, maybe an item that is moved. A smart camera can identify things in a camera uh, range of view and then alert you if that thing moves rather than if a whole area of screen moves or a bunch of pixels are moved as well. There's even areas of retention and more. But let's go straight into part two here, which is why would you use a smart camera? What can they do? Well, 
modern smart cameras arrive with support of pretty much the same five or six things. They've got extra features and they've tweaked them and refined them significantly, but the kind of same five things are always recognised. Number one, facial recognition. It's probably the biggest and most important one of all. Facial recognition in a smart AI camera presents you with lots of options for doing things like identifying who is in a building, be it your home or office environment. It will identify people. And so it will produce a report and say that people and these faces da, 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 have been recognised. And it will group them all together that this person has been identified. You go into the software back end of the camera and go, oh, that's Robbie. And that means from that moment on, it not only will not alert if Robbie enters the field of view, but also if you want to find footage that has Robbie in it, you can then just draw just that footage. Moreover, you can identify how and when someone enters an area. If you want to know when Robbie enters a room, it will tell you. And then you'll get an alert to say that this specific person has entered, even if 50 people enter a room. Moving beyond that, we can talk about item definition. Item definition is when a camera can identify things, and it's a huge difference there. And, that, and again, that could be summarised to vehicles, that could be summarised to animals, that can be summarised to even non-recognisable items. Case in point, you can have a camera monitoring a pavement. That pavement can have people walking all over it, walking back and forth, going to work, going to dinner, doing whatever they want to do. But if a car or a moped or something goes onto that pavement and mounts it and parks there, the camera can alert because it understands the difference between a person and a vehicle. The third thing that smart cameras do present very, very well is area of field detection. Now, most camera software that you connect to, let's call them dumb cameras, that can do this already, but the cameras themselves can't really do it effectively. Area of field recognition is when you can say that in the place you're looking at here, if anyone walks into this bottom area of the picture, the camera will alert. It can also use that information and trigger different warnings. So, for example, if you say the bottom area of the screen, I want to know if someone walks into that area. But I also want to know if they stand in that area for too long. I want to know if they're a person or a car or using any of those other AI-assisted algorithms. The result is that a smart camera can do a lot more about area de of detection than a traditional non-intelligent camera. Fourth thing that smart cameras do very, very well is counting. Now, I know that sounds incredibly mundane, but hear me out. Imagine you are in a coffee shop. You've got cameras dotted around the place, and you want to know how many people enter a building. You want to know how many people come to the coffee shop, how long do they stay, how old are they, what are their gender, are they children, are they young adults, are they the elderly. A smart camera, particularly in modern gen smart cameras, can identify this information. It can be quite scary. And these cameras, you could have stations, so you can produce a mean report that says, in this week, we had this many men, this many women, this many people with children. They stayed on average for this length of time. And the peak periods for each of these are over this graph. A smart camera can give you that information as a spreadsheet, which then you can graph up in your own way. It can identify people counting. So you can just draw a line and an area of effect in, uh, in the camera's field of view that says anyone that covers this area of field between this line if they walk over that line, it counts them. And because it can facial track, it can also say when that person leaves. Obviously, we are talking very, very high-end cameras. The level one uh, kind of gives you that functionality, but even then, you do need to go a little bit higher to some of that top-tier access stuff. The final thing that smart cameras present that normal dumb cameras do not present is combining all of these features together to give you a real intelligent surveillance log. So when, with a smart camera, you can produce reports that will give you the most detailed breakdown in a written form of a surveillance scenario that a dumb camera just can't give you. So if you have a camera on for a certain area for a week, what you want to know is everything. How many cars entered a premise? How many people walked back and forth? How old were they? What were their gender? Do we know them? How many of them were unknown? How many of them were the same people from the previous period? Lots of information like that. Smart cameras can produce reports, but obviously this is when you go to the real high tier stuff. None of the cameras I'm talking about today produce those reports. 
that these are the things that smart cameras can do. And if any of those features and functionality sound useful to you for your home or business environment, then a smart camera might well be the device for you because it's all sounding great. Or is it? Let's talk about the fourth point, which is smart cameras, what are the downsides? Now, there are negatives to these cameras. First and foremost, they are expensive. They really are. Um, smart cameras will often retail two to three times the price of traditional devices. These traditional devices, such as, you know, as we see over here, normal cameras here, we've got like a little IP camera, like a nanny cam there, that's about 30, 40 quid. We've got even lower res ones here, and these ones retail for about 30 quid. You can go up a little bit further, look at other IP cameras here, they'll retail for about 60, 70, maybe 80 quid. And these have got a bit of more functionality, you know, audio back and forth. You can even, you know, repurpose old technology, really. You've got web cameras as well. Logitech do loads of those still. They are traditional old style cameras, old mobile phones that are, you know, more than about four or five years old. They've got great cameras on them. You know, camera technology on mobile phones has long since surpassed things where we talk about megapixels uh, with any height of excitement anymore. It's more about what the camera can do. And you get like mult cameras that have got like four or five different lenses inside. These are all devices that feature traditional cameras and smart cameras being more expensive, where you find them it differs too. You've got ones like outdoor cameras, like this one, the level one, that you would find outside a shop or a big office block. You've got smart home cameras like the SimCam S1. SimCam S1, about 130, 140 quid now I believe. Um, this is a smart camera for the home. And then you've got modern mobile phones, you know, modern Google and, you know, modern uh, Apple phones. They've all got smart cameras built into them as well. These are all kind of smart camera devices, but all you may have noticed already that the smart cameras do cost significantly more. And there's, you know, there's no way around that because there's a lot more research that goes into it and a lot more hardware with those um, SO, uh, software on chips and CPUs along with that flash memory. Next, it's about the security of the devices. Smart cameras, in a way, are less secure because they come into two real categories, most smart cameras. The first generation of smart cameras, and even now some of the more affordable ones, heavily rely on an internet connection at all times because it needs outside support. It needs um, to be connected to the internet at all times. That's why you'll notice a lot of more affordable IP um, smart cameras arrive with cloud subscription services as well. They don't allow you to connect to external storage devices other than maybe an SD card, but the majority of them do require internet services to be on for them to function as smart cameras all of the time, which I know puts, puts a lot of people off. More expensive cameras actually have a lot more hardware and the software living inside the camera a lot more, but these cameras you will generally find also still rely on some kind of subscription service because the, cam uh, the camera company, and again, I'm including Axis here, Level 1 do a little bit, there's a bunch of other brands out there too, their IP cameras still rely on subscription services online. And notwithstanding the fact that that means that pushes that cost even further up, the result is that you are reliant on third-party platforms, which kind of people don't like. Because when you've got IP cameras in your home and on your person, that's real close-knit. That's up in your uh, personal space quite a great deal on your personal time. And with hacking being a constant threat with anything internet-based, and you're relying a lot on a company that you may or may not have heard of up until this point in any large degree, there's a lots of reasons why having an always-on or a constantly internet-subscribed service, which can assist with things like DDNS, don't get me wrong, can be quite, quite alarming in smart cameras. Um, last, we can talk about network and internet concerns because smart cameras and their requirements uh, for the most part to internet-based services in a small or large degree means that to have these cameras in your home or business environment means that without an internet connection, you're not getting the intelligence that you need. You're not getting the support that you're requiring here. So if you've got smart cameras dotted around your business environment and you're relying on cloud and internet services, whether it is for assisted AI recording to buffer up the AI algorithm inside these cameras or because you're utilizing an internet connection as your storage medium, if someone severs the internet connection in your home or business environment, you've lost a significant chunk of your surveillance coverage, be it your actual recording or 
the AI assisted support that you're relying on. It can lead to delays in uh, recognition and alert and hopefully uh, security um, provisos kicking in. So that could, these are some of the downsides of smart cameras. Price, internet connectivity, and recording and retention policies and how you can act on that stuff. So that's kind of the main bevy of security cameras and where smart cameras live and their pros and cons. But what are the alternatives to smart cameras? Because I've already spent a good 60, 70% of this video trashing these cameras here and talking about why they're a bit pish and why they're not really gonna do it for you compared with smart cameras. So what can be the alternative to smart cameras if that's either they're too expensive or they're just not you know, they're not ringing the bells for you in terms of security. Well, ultimately, a very rugged NVR system, be it a NAS, so a network attached storage device like these devices over here, or if you're going to be utilizing an NVR system that's dedicated to surveillance. Now, a lot of modern NVR and NAS surveillance systems have got all of those smart features and functionality built into them. So rather than buy three or four smart cameras at three or four times the price of a normal camera, what you can buy are less intelligent IP cameras, such as the rear link ones, ones that aren't smart, in this range at least anyway, get several of these and use that money that you're not spending on a bunch of smart cameras and not spending on cloud services and cloud subscription payments every month and pay them into one standalone NAS system that has the AI support built into it. Now, you want to go for a much more powerful NAS system. If you're looking at QNAPs, you want to look at at least an i3, maybe a Pentium system. Or if you're looking at Synology, I recommend looking at some of their DVA deep video analytics-based systems like the DVA3219. These are NAS systems that have got AI support in a number of ways in their surveillance software. So you can have moderately unintelligent cameras with great camera lenses and great um you know, uh, picture quality, resolution, frames per second, and let the NAS take care of all of that smart stuff. Why is it better? Well, one, all of the AI recognition and AI analysis of the recorded storage happens just in the NAS. It doesn't happen off-site. It doesn't go to a cloud service. It remains in the device in your home or business environment. Also, you can still have another tier to your strategy and have this backing up to a cloud or backing up to another NAS offsite if you want and have a multi-tiered backup strategy. That's a nice option to you. You don't have to do that. You might not want to, but it is an option to you. Secondly, if you've got cameras dotted around your home or business environment and the internet connection goes down, you don't lose anything because these cameras are not recording to the internet. They are recording to the NAS. The cameras are on a local area network, whether you're using a switch like this one, or you're utilizing um, a wireless router where the NAS is connected to the router and all the cameras are wireless, but they are all transmitting to the NAS, not to the internet, to the NAS on the local area network. So if your internet connection is go goes down accidentally or nefarious individuals go around the back and snip the wires, it doesn't matter because the NAS will still be retaining all the information and if you have another NAS knocked around another part of the network in another part of the building hidden away you can have these NASs backing up to one another and then if someone steals this it doesn't matter because they're like the NASs can be live synced together to maintain those recordings even if the power is cut down you can have UPSs on site that continue to power all of the devices all the time even when the power goes down for as long as the batteries last and you can still get the security alerts and still get all of the um, security alerts from the UPS, from the surveillance NAS, and from the camera. So that is the best alternative right now to smart cameras until smart cameras tie up a few of those slight security snafus there. But this has been What is an IP Camera? I hope you guys have found this video useful. I'm going to continue to make a few more videos about IP cameras for the home and business because weirdly this is not a subject that gets enough attention here online and I will be making more while I've got all of this kit here. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, do go into the comments and let me know and click like. If you enjoyed it, click subscribe to learn more and stay tuned for more videos on surveillance and I will see you next time.